Alef, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, lof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, mem, yon, samech, ayin, pey, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series from the Aleph Bet. I'm Mark Golub, and it's my pleasure to help you learn to pronounce Hebrew words and to be able to read and understand many Hebrew words that are part of a Jew's experience of Judaism. If you've joined us for the first few lessons, you're now familiar with the Hebrew letter Shin, which makes the sound of Sh. The name of a Hebrew letter usually indicates the sound it makes, so the shin makes the sh sound, which we would write in English as sh. And in addition to the letter shin, on our last program we also began looking at Hebrew vowels, which in Hebrew are not letters, but rather are dots and dashes. In English, of course, both consonants and vowels are letters. The English consonants s and h are letters, and so are the English vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. They're all letters. In English, both consonants and vowels are letters. But in Hebrew, consonants are letters, such as the letter shin, while vowels are dots and dashes that are placed either under or over Hebrew letters. And last time, we introduced you to the first Hebrew vowels, patach and kamatz. And we explained that in Sephardic Hebrew, the Hebrew dialect adopted by the state of Israel, the patach and kamatz both tend to make the same vowel sound, ah, similar to the sound the letter A makes in the word father, ah. So if you see either the patach or the kamatz under the letter shin, reading down, this Hebrew syllable would be read sha. And here you see it with a kamatz, if you have a kamatz under the letter shin, reading down, this Hebrew syllable would also be sha. And we also learned that in Hebrew, every Hebrew syllable has one vowel and always one vowel. Never more than one vowel and always just one vowel. Which means that by noticing how many vowels are in a Hebrew word, one immediately knows how many syllables are in that word. And the Hebrew language is a very mathematical language, a very organized and logical language, much more so than English or other Romance languages, which is why Hebrew is one of the easiest languages to learn, to pronounce, and to understand. And again, there's always a one-to-one -one correlation between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables that Hebrew word has. Just count the vowels in a Hebrew word, the dots and dashes, and you'll know immediately how many syllables are in that Hebrew word. So in this nonsense word, you can see that there are two vowels and therefore two syllables. And by pronouncing one syllable at a time, you can easily read this nonsense word. So remembering that Hebrew reads down and then right to left, the first syllable of this nonsense word is sha. And the second syllable of this nonsense word is also sha. So that this entire nonsense word is pronounced sha sha. By the way, in Hebrew, the accent tends to be placed on the last syllable of the word. So this nonsense word would be read once again sha sha. And not every Hebrew word is accented on the last syllable, but it's easy to know when the accent is placed elsewhere. And in general, Hebrew words are accented on the last syllable. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed that in the nonsense word we just showed you, the second shin has a dot in it. This dot is called a dagesh. A dagesh can appear in almost any Hebrew letter. And in most Hebrew letters, the dagesh does not change the sound that letter makes. So a shin with or without a dagesh is pronounced exactly the same way, sh. There are three Hebrew letters 
which do change their sound depending on whether there is a dagesh in the letter or not. And we'll learn those three letters later on. But in general, a Hebrew letter sound is the same, with or without a dagesh. Both shins here make the same sound, shh. And you might ask, if a dagesh does not change the sound of a Hebrew letter, why is it there? And the answer is somewhat technical in terms of Hebrew grammar. Technically, a dagesh doubles the sound of a Hebrew letter, almost as if the letter is appearing twice. But as Hebrew has developed, letters are not written twice, and there's virtually no difference in the sound most Hebrew letters make with or without a dagesh. So now you try reading this nonsense word. How many vowels are in this nonsense word? Three is correct. And therefore, how many syllables are in the nonsense word? Three is correct again. There's always a one-to-one -one correlation of vowels to syllables in Hebrew words. So if this nonsense word has three syllables, simply read the word syllable by syllable. Remember, Hebrew is always read down and then right to left. So the first syllable of this nonsense word is sha. The second syllable of this nonsense word is sha. And again, the dagesh inside the shin does not affect the sound the shin makes. And the third syllable of this nonsense word is also sha. So remembering that the accent in Hebrew tends to be placed on the last syllable. How would you pronounce this nonsense word? That's right, sha, sha, sha. And in general, that's the basic way in which Hebrew is read. It's that simple. Syllable by syllable, letter vowel, letter vowel, letter vowel. But... I also told you last time that there's a key, a, a secret key, to being able to read any Hebrew word, no matter how complicated. And I promised I was going to show you this key to being able to read any Hebrew word on this lesson. And I have to tell you, when I was a child learning Hebrew in Talmud Torah, no one ever explained this key to me. Alex, you're behind the camera. Did anybody explain a key to you? No. You, no one explains this secret key to reading any Hebrew word. I'm going to show you the key to reading Hebrew so that you'll be able to pronounce any Hebrew word you see, no matter how complicated. So here's the key to reading Hebrew. It's all in these two dots called the Shva. The secret to being able to pronounce any Hebrew word is the shva. So let me explain the shva to you. I've already explained in Hebrew, vowels are dots and dashes. There's one exception, the shva. Even though the shva is two dots, the shva is never a vowel. And I want to say that again. The shva is never a vowel. It's never counted as a vowel. Sometimes the shva even makes no sound at all. It's silent. It's not a vowel. And sometimes the shva does make the, the sound of the English short i, i, as in the word fish. But whether the shva is silent or whether it's pronounced, the shva is never counted as a vowel. A shva is the only set of dots in Hebrew, which is not a vowel, and the shva is never counted as a vowel. I can't say it often enough. The shva is not counted as a vowel. And you know, there are very few things in life which are never. One of them is, the shva is never a vowel, and the shva is never counted as a vowel. And every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. Let me repeat that. Every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a shva. 
And as you'll learn as we go along, this is the secret. This is the key to being able to pronounce any Hebrew word. It's all about the Shva. And honestly, it may take you a little bit of time to get used to the way the Shva functions and operates. But the more comfortable you become with the Shva, the easier and easier it'll be to read and pronounce any Hebrew word at all, no matter how complicated. And right now I just want to show you how the silent Shva functions. Just the silent Shva. And for now, I want you to assume that any Shva you see, any Shva we show you, is silent, that it makes no sound at all. So that if you see a silent Shva under a Hebrew letter, it means you'd simply pronounce the sound of the letter, as if it were all alone. The Shin makes a Sh sound. If a shin were to have a silent shva under it, it would still simply make a sh sound. Then what's the purpose or the function of the silent shva? And here's the answer. The silent shva ends a syllable. Every Hebrew letter with a vowel under it or over it begins the next Hebrew syllable. But a Hebrew letter with a silent shva under it is added to the Hebrew letter and vowel before it, in front of it. It's as if a silent shva extends a syllable by one additional letter. So for example, here we have a simple Hebrew syllable, sha. Now if this sha is followed by a shin with a silent shva under it, the shin with the silent shva is added to create one complete syllable. So that this syllable is now read shash, shash. And notice in this syllable, there is only one vowel under the first shin because a shva is never counted as a vowel. And because the second shin has a silent shva under it, the second shin is added to the shin with a vowel that precedes it to become part of the same one syllable. Technically, by the way, we say the silent schwa closes the syllable. A letter with a silent schwa extends the syllable by that one letter and obviously ends the syllable as well. The syllable sha is obviously made up of one letter and one vowel. Technically, this is called an open syllable because the syllable ends with the vowel sound. If a syllable ends with a vowel sound, it is called an open syllable. If a syllable ends with the sound of a consonant, it is called a closed syllable. And the only way a syllable can end with a consonant sound is if it is over a silent schwa. In this nonsense word, each shin begins its own syllable, begins another syllable. Sha is a syllable, and sha is a syllable. This nonsense word has two vowels, the patach and the kamatz. Therefore, it has two syllables, and each shin begins another syllable. But now look at this nonsense word. How many vowels does this nonsense word have? Count the vowels in the word. Two is the correct answer. This word has two vowels. Now what about the dots under the middle shin? That again is a silent schwa, and a schwa is never counted as a vowel. This nonsense word has two syllables because it has two vowels and only two vowels. Because a schwa is never counted as a vowel. And if this word has two syllables, what is the entire first syllable? If you recognize that the second shin has a silent schwa under it, you know that the second shin is added to the preceding shin to create the entire first syllable of this nonsense word, shash. Shash. 
the silent schwa ends or closes the first syllable of this nonsense word. And if you were to draw lines to divide a Hebrew word into syllables, you would always draw the line after a silent schwa. So in this nonsense word, you would draw a line after the second shin, the shin with the silent schwa. A silent schwa always, always ends or closes a syllable. So now how would you pronounce this nonsense word? And remember, Hebrew words are usually accented on the last syllable. If you pronounce this nonsense word, shash sha, congratulations, mazal tov, you are correct. The first syllable is pronounced shash, the second syllable is pronounced sha, the nonsense word is pronounced shash sha. So now try this nonsense word. Simply pronounce this nonsense word syllable by syllable. How many vowels are in the word? Two. How many syllables does the word therefore have? Two. What's the first syllable? Simply sha. Good. What's the second syllable? Since the last shin has a silent schwa under it, the second shin ends that syllable, and the syllable is pronounced shash. And this nonsense word would be pronounced shashash. Shashash. Now how about this nonsense word? Take a look at it. And take your time. It's really simply a two-syllable word, but each syllable ends in a silent schwa. How would you pronounce this nonsense word? If you said shash shash, a bit of a tongue twister, and Hebrew words are rarely this difficult to pronounce, but this is a tongue twister. If you said shash shash, you are correct. Both syllables end with letters that have silent schwas. Both syllables are closed syllables. Now look at this. Remember I said earlier that every Hebrew letter must have either a vowel or a schwa. So what about the last shin in this word? It doesn't appear to have a vowel and it doesn't appear to have a schwa. It looks like there's nothing under the last shin of this nonsense word. And the answer is, the shva under the shin is understood. Every last letter of a word that does not have a vowel of its own must have a silent shva. And as a result, that shva is almost never written when it comes at the end of a word because everyone understands it's there. And everyone understands that the last letter ends the last syllable, and must have a silent schwa unless it has a vowel of its own. So this word is pronounced as if the silent schwa actually is written under the last shin, and it's pronounced shashash, shashash. So let's add one new Hebrew letter and see if you can read some of these other nonsense words. Here's the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter tough. And which sound do you think the letter tough makes? If you said t as the English letter T, you are correct. If you know the name of a Hebrew letter, you know the sound that letter makes. So the tough makes a t or T sound. And there's a very easy hint to remember what sound this letter makes because it's the only Hebrew letter with a big toe. The tough has a big toe. And our producer, Alan Ulrich, has even created a little cartoon to illustrate for you the sound the tough makes by showing us how the tough has a big toe. Yes, the tough has a big toe. Wonderful, Alan. So how would you pronounce this syllable? 
If you pronounced it ta, you are correct. And how about this syllable? If you said ta again, you're correct again. And the dagesh inside the tuf does not change the sound of the letter. By the way, when I was a child, I was first taught the Ashkenazic dialect of Hebrew, which many Jews still use today. And in Ashkenazic Hebrew, the letter tuf is pronounced differently depending on whether the tuf has a dagesh or not. In Ashkenazic Hebrew, there is a difference between a tuf with a dagesh and a tuf without a dagesh. With a dagesh, the letter is called a tuf and is pronounced t as the English letter t. But in Ashkenazic Hebrew, without the dagesh, the tuf is called a suf and is pronounced s like the English letter s. And so, for example, in Ashkenazic Hebrew, the ceremony for an eight-day-old boy is called a bris, which means covenant, because the word ends in a tuf without a dagesh, and in Ashkenazic Hebrew, a tuf without a dagesh is pronounced as an s sound. Whereas in Sephardic Hebrew, the ceremony is called a brit, because in Sephardic Hebrew, the tuf without a dagesh is also pronounced as a t, t. Is either pronunciation wrong? Of course not. Each pronunciation is correct for Ashkenazic Hebrew and for Sephardic Hebrew. However, since we're using the Israeli Sephardic pronunciation on this series, we're teaching that the tuf always makes a T sound, t, whether it has a dagesh in it or whether it does not. And with that said, try pronouncing these syllables. How would you pronounce this syllable? Ta. Good. How about this two-syllable nonsense word? Ta-ta. Good. Remember, the accent tends to be placed on the last syllable, ta-ta. How about this syllable with a silent schwa? Tat. Very good, tat. The second tuf with a silent schwa ends or closes the syllable. Now how about this syllable with the two Hebrew letters you know? How will you pronounce this nonsense syllable? If you said tash, you are absolutely correct. Good for you. How about this one? If you said shot, you're correct again. Okay, how about this one? This word has two vowels, so it's a two-syllable nonsense word. And the shin has a silent schwa, so it ends the first syllable. So how would you pronounce this nonsense word? Tashta. Excellent, Mitsuyan. The first syllable is tash, and the second syllable is ta, and the word is tashta. And if you were to draw a line to divide this nonsense word, you draw it after the silent schwa. Tashta. One more. Take a look at this word and see if you can pronounce it. And if you can, you have mastered 90% of what it means to be able to look at a Hebrew word and pronounce it. Take a look at this word. How would you now, with all you know, pronounce this nonsense word? If you said, Sha Tash Ta, you are correct, Mitsuyan, Mitsuyan, excellent. And here's how the word is broken up. First, how many vowels does this nonsense word have? You should have said three. There's one vowel under the first letter, the shin, a second vowel under the second letter, the tuf, the third letter shin has a silent schwa, 
and the shva is never counted as a vowel, that tells us the shin ends the second syllable. And the last letter of this nonsense word, the tough, has the third vowel of the word, so the word has three vowels and therefore three syllables. The first syllable is simply sha. The second syllable, which ends with a silent shva, is tash. Since we add the shin over the silent shva to the taf in front of it. And the third syllable is simply ta. Put the three syllables together and you get sha tash ta with the accent on the last syllable. And again, if you were able to read this nonsense word, you are 90% on the way to being able to pronounce any Hebrew word you see. And now all you need to do is learn the rest of the Hebrew alphabet, the letters and the vowels, and later on to learn how to read the pronounced shva, and then you'll be able to pronounce any and every Hebrew word you see. And when we meet next time, you'll learn your first real Hebrew word. And I can tell you now, it's probably the most important single word in the living experience of the Jewish people. And I want to mention that we'll be putting up lesson sheets and worksheets that go with our Hebrew lessons. I hope you'll join me next time for more of From the Aleph Bet. My friends, Shalom Ulehitraot. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of From the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more, we'll be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph Bet, Bet, Kimmel, Dalit, Hey, Bob, Sein, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Chaf, Lamed, Med,